Hello and welcome to Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Today we're discussing depression, both during pregnancy and postpartum. Dr. Elizabeth Fiddleson, Assistant Director of the Women's Program in Psychiatry at Columbia University is here to give us some important insights. So Liz, the first question I have for you is, how is depression identified in pregnancy and are there any differences compared to how it's identified in a non-pregnant person? Sure, well, for the most part, depression in pregnancy is identified in much the same way. Symptoms typically involve having a low or depressed mood, feeling a loss of interest or pleasure in things, including for pregnant women, sort of a loss of connection or pleasure in the pregnancy. Now, we're not just talking about feeling blue or a little sad, we're talking about some right. potentially very serious physical and psychiatric consequences exactly. to both the mom and the baby or the fetus. What are some of those risks? We know that untreated depression is associated with pregnancy complications, including preeclampsia, preterm labor, low birth weight babies, and poor um, obstetric outcomes. In addition, um, depression during pregnancy can put a woman at risk for not caring for herself, so uh, maybe not being as attentive to prenatal care, or taking those prenatal vitamins, not paying as much attention to uh, nutrition, and in more serious cases, actually, there's risk of suicide. In a woman who may have a history of depression mm -hmm. herself and is considering getting pregnant, what are the important things for that woman to know? One of the important things to know is that I, there is this myth that pregnancy is this time of uh, special well-being and that it's protective against depression or psychiatric illness. A woman with a history of depression remains at risk for depression during pregnancy and we think particularly at risk uh, in the postpartum period. In one study about 60 per 68 percent of women who stopped their antidepressant medications during pregnancy had a relapse to a depressive episode during the pregnancy. 68 percent. 68 percent. But really the decision about medications in pregnancy needs to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. And what a lot has been in the medical literature in the recent past about yes. increased risk of certain type of birth defects with certain types of antidepressant medication. Can you just briefly comment on that? Most of the data actually in the literature is pretty reassuring in terms of um, first trimester exposure mm -hmm. and birth defects. We do not believe that the, uh, antide the SSRI antidepressants, that includes typically the Prozac mm -hmm. or, pa or Zoloft, mm -hmm. are major teratogens or may uh, cause major malformations in any high rate. There are some individual antidepressants that may be associated with small increased risks in certain rare birth defects, mm -hmm. but these associations are really unclear and most likely if these are true, they're very small increases in risk. So, Elizabeth, let, let's talk about the other therapies other than medication for women who are prone to depression or who have depression while they're pregnant. During pregnancy, there have been excellent studies that there are very effective psychotherapy treatments, typically 12 sessions once a week, um, talking about uh, the interpersonal context of depression and, and things a woman really can do to change these uh, problems for the better. What about um, other complementary or alternative therapies that a pregnant woman uh, can try? It's very important that a woman pay attention to her nutrition in general during pregnancy, but right. particularly if there's any question of depression. Um, some vitamin deficiencies or thyroid abnormalities mm -hmm. may be associated with uh, depression. Folate, right, is a big one. And there was a Harvard yes. study that showed that 40% of women with depression actually have a folate deficiency. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we've heard vitamin D insufficiency right. or deficiency has been linked with depression, right. so general good nutrition is Exactly, important. and any woman who has depress uh, symptoms of depression really should get a medical evaluation. In addition, really reaching out for social supports is quite helpful, or um, even things like massage therapy mm -hmm. for some women can be really helpful to get through some of those feelings. Uh, it's such interesting stuff, Liz. We'll be back after a brief word from our sponsor. Stay with us. Now, going into the period of time after the baby is born, yes. talk a little bit about postpartum depression and what should both a woman be on the lookout for as well as her f friends and family. Sure. Between 50 and 85 percent of women experience some mood disturbance right. after a pregnancy, and um, so we consider that normal. But it shouldn't affect her ability to function or to feel connected to the baby. Right. Um, so if those symptoms persist longer than two weeks, or if they're more severe, that's when you need to be on the lookout for postpartum depression. And postpartum depression actually is much more common, I think, than people realize. Mm -hmm. and it, um, 
affects between 10 and 15 percent of women. Mm -hmm. So that's one in eight right. um, women. Now, um, I have a lot of patients who are very interested in more holistic or natural sure. kind of therapies. Mm -hmm. What else, other than antidepressant medication, could a woman who is suffering from postpartum depression pursue in terms of therapy? Well, that's such an important point because I think that one of the myths about postpartum depression or one of the fears that women may have is, oh, if I talk, if I tell my doctor about it, they're just going to put me on medication. Right, right. When in fact, there's a whole range of treatment options for postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. In mild cases, um, some women, it, it really is just a matter of increasing the social supports and maybe going to a support group, attending mommy and me yoga, going to parenting classes. It's also important that a woman have pay attention to her nutrition. In addition, there are very effective psychotherapy treatments for postpartum depression, including one type of therapy called interpersonal psychotherapy, mm -hmm. as well as uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, among other therapies. And typically when medication is used, yes. what how much time elapses from when medication is started to when the woman actually starts to feel better? Well, it is variable. In general, we say there's a lag time of about two to four weeks, mm. uh, which can be quite difficult. But in that time, there are other interventions, such as helping the women get an adequate night's sleep, um, which can be very important. I think, uh, and I'm sure you see this a lot in your practice, I know I see it in mine, that there's such a stigma with depression in general. And then when you talk about postpartum depression or depression in pregnancy, that stigma seems to be multiplied, you know, 10 or 100 times. Yeah. What should people know so that they don't have that added issue of a stigma surrounding depression? Well, I think that we all need to be educated that postpartum, that depression and postpartum depression really is an illness. It's not a character flaw. It's not a weak sign of weakness. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Right. It's an illness for which there are good treatments. And I think that shift in thinking about it can be very helpful. Well, certainly we could have discussed this topic extensively uh, in much greater detail, but we hope that at least this provided some important information on postpartum depression and depression in pregnancy. I'd like to thank our guest, Dr. Fiddleson, for your insight. Um, and where can people go? Sure, so um, one important resource is the Postpartum Support International, which is www.postpartum.net. Um, our program at Columbia, the women's program at Columbia, um, can be found in the columbiapsychiatry.org website. Or at least women can ask their doctors Absolutely. about this. And thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Health and Wellness. Until next time, wishing you good health.